questions for Coach Miller at this time. Yep, right here on the right. Trevor Haas from the Daily Orange. Uh, Coach, what did you learn about Syracuse while watching them in Maui? Um, they're big, and they're really, really well coached and good. We didn't spend a ton of time watching them. Um, just the eye test because the Maui games are back to back, and um, saw them really one time because we played Cal and, and they did as well. And you know, I think obviously the size and the length and the zone um, can consume you if you if you let it. Um, and I think offensively, they have a lot of guys individually they can isolate on you. You know, really talented. Um, but it's a typical Syracuse team. I mean, they're very good. They're very big. Um, and you're going to have to be organized. They thrive on the steals. They thrive on their defense, creating offense. And down the other end, you know, they, they really have some game changers in terms of Cooney, uh, Fair, and they're really good off the glass at times as well with Grant. So we have our work cut out for us. Other questions? In the back left there. Yep. Coach Jonathan Snyder, Big Four Talk. Just yesterday during uh, in the first half, I think it was like seven minute, maybe a little bit longer stretch of continuous basketball, no media timeouts, no nothing. How does a stretch like that affect you, uh, you know the play on the court, and how does it affect you as a coach? Does that change anything that you do? Does it change your mindset? Because it's very rare that you know seven minutes go by without any sort of stoppage or a whistle. Yeah, sometimes when the four minute medias go over, guys are gassed. I mean, you can tell. Uh, more so on offense that they're not running the floor than you can on defense. I think, you know, during those stretches, guys are trying hard. I think where they rest the most during those stretches when they're gassed is running the floor on offense. And, you know, you're looking to get subs in the game. You're hoping to get to the media fast as you can to get the subs. But we've had a few games this season where that's happened, where you, you know, honestly, it goes five or six minutes. You almost have to get all five out. So um, you just keep an eye on it. Um, I think it suffers on offense more than it does on defense. And, and just as a follow-up, if I could, what does that say about the quality and the high level of play during yesterday's game that there was that much time eclipsed with no, with no stoppage, no whistle, no foul, or nothing? Well, both teams obviously have been through the, uh, the battles. And I think the guys on the floor are conditioned at this point to play you know, as many minutes as they possibly can. I also think the stage, the adrenaline that's out there right now, I mean, that, that helps you. One thing about the NCAA tournament is when you do get a couple medias, they're longer than normal. Um, so you, you get a little extra rest. Uh, but I thought our guys handled um, it well. I thought we, we played um, all the way through the finish just like Ohio State did. I'm going to go here and then um, back to. Matt Schwarty, Flyer Hoops. Coach, in the non-conference, you guys saw a lot of zone. It's not Syracuse's zone, but is there anything that you can take from those experiences to prepare you for tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you know, your team has to evolve as the season goes, and you want to improve on everything. Um, I didn't think we saw a lot of zone in, in the A-10 this year. Usually you see a little bit more non-conference. I don't think we saw a lot of man-to-man. -man. Um, so we've, we've corrected some things. We have we've really have you know, a different way of attacking the zone now as opposed to we did in the non-conference. The biggest thing for me is you know, I want our team to be very confident in what we do, and we're not going to change a lot. One of the things we have to amp up, though, is the pace of our play. When we play against zone, we have to play as fast as we do against the man. It's the, it's the comfort level of our kids. And that's the one thing that we have to do tomorrow. That game's got to be on the run. We're here on the left hand. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN.com. Archie, a lot's been made about your conference affiliation. We've got three sort of Big East teams here tomorrow playing. How much does that really matter? And how much is it really just about you building a schedule and a program? I mean, does the conference affiliation really matter to get you here? I think the conference is always something that you take great pride in being in. In particular, I think the Atlantic 10 is underrated. Uh, since I became the head coach at Dayton, um, I can't call the numbers, but I'm going to say with six this year and at least four back-to-back -back years, I mean, um, that's 14 automatic bids or 14 NCAA tournament seeds, you know, opportunities in three years. There's very few leagues that can do that. So, and I think our, you know, Bernadette has done an amazing job with the defections and some of the, the conference alignments. That the Atlantic 10 is strong now as it ever was. And, you know, as it goes down the line and you look at the programs there, you got great coaches and you got great players that are a little bit older. And I think. There's a little chip on your shoulder when you're in the Atlantic 10 usually because you're constantly left out of the BCS talk. But 
Um, I'm not sure how many other teams got six bids, uh, but when you build your schedule and you're building your program, you know, everything is revolved around the strength of your conference and what you're trying to do. And for us, um, you know, we're, we're trying to be where we're at right now. And to do that, you have to play a national schedule the best of your ability. We've tried that. And we had to take the next step in our league, which we hadn't done in a while. And I think this year, getting 10 conference wins, being right there uh, for maybe a, a bye, uh, you know, we were a lot more confident this year in a good league. So for us, we're building a program. This is where we want to be, and we have to build around our league. And I think right now the great thing is we can build a schedule around an at-large bid league. Right here in the Ray Kern from Mid Majority. Um, it's a it's a later start. Is that a relief to you to ha to have a seven ten start as opposed to like a new starter? Is that yeah? We get to last a little longer than everybody else, you know, throughout the days. You know what I mean? When a couple games go by, you know, you're still alive. You know, late in the game. Um, I thought. I mean, I don't, I don't care when we play. You know, I'm, we're excited to play in general. I think a seven ten tip in here, the environment with Syracuse being here is going to be one heck of a um, of a scene. David Jablonski, Dayton Daily News. With all the distractions, all the attention the Flyers are getting around the country today, how do you just make it about basketball for the next 24 hours? Stay with what we do. We don't talk about anything. You know, uh, there's enough coverage right now on television. They can hear. You know, I mean, there's enough. We don't have to talk about anything. It's around them all the time. Whether they're they're reading Twitter, whatever they're going to do, they're going to be around noise. For us to bring up noise, that's just it's that's not what we do. We don't talk about anything other than the the job at hand. Proud of our guys for the way they've handled in particular last month. And I thought coming into yesterday, we did a really good job of being ready to go. And I want to be ready to go on Saturday, so we're going to stay with what we do. Right on the right. 